Oh, we've had a beautiful melty day and it's eight degrees and climbing. Unreal. I can't believe I'm still here. <laughs> My house is all alone back in, in the West in Calgary. But we had a bunch of snow yesterday and <laughs> I can smell the spring in the air. I'm pretty sure it's time I should go home at least for a little bit and prepare for the summer. Anyway, let's get to uh, some more nabooing. Hey, what's going on my Nabooers? I uh, got something kind of cool to show you today. I've been frustrated copying files between disk images and CPM and cloud CPM to the computer, back and forth, back and forth. And also I did a video about how <laughs> complicated it is to copy files between user areas in cloud CPM. Um, or any CPM. <laughs> so I created a program called RNCMD. So RetroNet command. And let's take a little licky look at it. So we can list files remotely um, with the RNCMD LDIR command. So it'll list whatever files are inside of your RetroNet adapter store folder which you can find out where that is by looking inside of your settings, RetroNet, and you can change this folder if you want. So any files that are in here, you'll be able to list from the NABU. So let me demonstrate that by creating a file in here. Why don't I just create a file called... Um, actually, you know what we'll do? Let's build a file and put it in here. So let's go to my programs. There's a program I wrote last night um, called DPB, which is a disk, um, there we go. Uh, it displays the blocks uh, configuration of the CPM BIOS. So we'll just copy this file here and let's paste it inside of our documents. There we are. Paste that in there. Okay, we got a file that I created in there. We'll delete that DSK. Okay, so if I'm on my NABU and I have this file here and I want to run it on my NABU, what I could do is I can type in RNCMD LDIR and that's going to show me the files that are inside of here. There it is. So there's my DB view that we just copied in. So let's put that onto our C drive. So what I'll do here is I'm going to type in um, RNCMD. So we're gonna do an example copy from the internet adapter to a drive. So we're gonna to wanna to type in RNCMD IA is your prefix for internet adapter. And we'll just type in the file name, which is dpbview.com. And we're gonna put that on the uh, we'll just put it, do a demonstrate how you can copy it to any user folder. So I'm currently, or user area. So I'm currently in user area zero. So let's go to user area two of the C drive. And we're going to call it the same thing. D, uh, P, B, view, dot com. So there's our file copying. So every time you see a negative symbol, that's when it's reading from. And a plus means it's writing to. So that's our... Um, progress bar essentially <laughs> and the file we're copying is 9k each one of these units is actually 512 bytes so 512 bytes is four pages of or of a, of a CPM buffer CPM buffers are 128 bytes each cool so there our file was copied so if I go to the C drive and again we put this in user area 2 so we'll just go user oops, to dir there it is so let's run it and make sure that it copied and all the, the bits are in the right spot so what this should do is display the uh disk um disk blocks there we go so there's a configuration for the nab uh nabu rn 8 mb file format for the uh, eight megabyte hard drive that we use Okay, so back into our C drive, oops, E drive, sorry. And user zero. Let's show how we can copy between user areas. So I'll type in again, um, RNCMD, just so we can see 
what the commands are that we're going to be using. I'm going to drive the syntax. So let's try copying a local file from one folder to another. So what I could do here is rmcmd. Now we have a file here on the A drive. Actually, let's go crazy. Let's go to our C drive, the file we just downloaded, dpdview.com. Let's put that on the seventh user area <laughs> of the B drive. And we'll just call it the same thing, dpdview.com. Go, copy. So if we go over to our internet adapter, we can see here that there's lots of activity occurring as it's opening and closing drives, copying between the two different drives. Our file has been copied. We visit the B drive and jump into user area seven. And take a little look-see here. Ta-da! Okay, so the next thing we can do, which is the last thing I'll show you for RMCMD, is we can copy files from the NABU into the uh, store folder. And an example here is copy um, this one here, copy from the A drive to the IA. So I'll just jump into the B drive. Let's find a file that we want to copy. EIR. Let's see if anything in here is not significantly large. Hmm. These are all ROM files. They're going to be big, but let's try it anyway. So let's copy uh, goonies.rom. So I'll just jump back into my A drive where uh, RNCMD is. And we're going to go from the user area zero of the B drive. And the file is going to be goonies.rom. And we're going to copy that into the internet adapter. Goonies. There we go. Got it? Boom. And file has begun copying. We can see here there's our Goonies file. Oh, I didn't put the .com on the end, so it's just a Goonies. But you can see that it's copying and we have our blocks being displayed here. As well as you can see the uh, internet adapter doing its thing. While that copies, let me tell you a little bit about Cloud CPM. Um, as you know, I've been on a kick for optimizing code that's been my thing lately and that has resulted in a ton of updates as you might have been noticing to the cloud cpm bios and to uh, a bunch of the software that resides on the drives and yeah i'm pretty happy with it a um, bunch of neat things i've done which which has been fun for example i added and let's see where is this do, 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 do. Yeah, here's our stack where I save and restore the stack for each function. And this is something I didn't know. Um, EXX. This is super cool. This is something I've known about, but I've never used them. There's something called shadow registers. There's a duplicate copy of registers. And you can actually copy the registers B, C, D, E, H, L. And there's also an AF to the B, C, D, E, H, L. And then you can do the AF on its own as well if you want. So with one command, with EXX. So rather than pushing to the stack, one, two, three, which is pretty expensive, the column we're gonna care about is this Z80 timing column here. And let's take a look at push. Alphabetical DJ, what are you running away from here? There we go. So pushing B, C, D, E, each of those, 11 cycles. Wow. And how about EXX? How many cycles is that? Four. So consider what we just did in savings here. DE, and then another push for BE, another push for HL. So those alone, three of them, that's 33 cycles, three times 11. And we replace that with just an EXX, which is just four cycles. So, wow, that's a, that's a huge savings right there. Something else that made a significant difference in size was allocating variables. So in, there we go, 
in uh, Z888DK, we can specify a variable location with an underscore underscore AT command, bracket the address that we want to put the variable, and then of course the variable that we're going to reference uh, by its name with the type. So there's variables that didn't need to be set and they didn't need to uh, be included in the binary itself. Now I have a little bit of space up at the very top of memory where um, the interrupts run. You know, interrupts, I mentioned this before, um, the, the first two bytes of the 16-bit interrupt needs to be uh, of a number, like any address, but the next two bytes of the, uh, of the interrupt address need to be a zero, zero because it's vector-based. So based upon the interrupt, it'll actually increment from that zero, zero upwards to the address. So therefore, I have it at FF00, which means anything from FF00 upwards um, after the interrupt mask is open for me to do whatever I want with. So in the BIOS itself, whenever a system call is being run, a BDOS call is being run, um, you might notice here when I was displaying the stack that I throw the common stack at FFFFF, which starts counting backwards from there as it builds a stack. And when an interrupt occurs, it goes to FF40. That's because an interrupt can happen while we're inside of another function inside of the BDOS. And the interrupts are for uh, obviously for the keyboard. So what I could do up in that memory space area is I could throw a bunch of variables and get them out of the actual program memory because they don't need to be actually program memory variables. So they don't need to be part of the binary, they only need to be part of the actual memory. So I can actually allocate these variables into memory. So that saves me, you know, think about this, each one of these 16s is two bytes. So one, two, three, four, there's eight bytes I saved right there, plus nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 bytes. So you might think to yourself, that's not very much DJ, but it is. When you're dealing with a BIOS, um, you want it to be as small and compact as possible because you want that to sit up high away from everything else so that you can have lots of memory space to run your programs. Other things I did for saving, which is pretty funny, is uh, the when you first booted up the um, BIOS, you'd have your NABU Cloud CPM. And if you scrolled all the way to the right, you'd get this NABU Forever that I put up there as a little Easter egg for helping people who want to learn how to use the left and right scrolling for the virtual lady. So I threw that as a least drag for testing that out. But anyway, to put that in there, my first version just had a whole bunch of spaces. And then at the very end over here after 80, 70, whatever column or uh, characters, right? Because subtra subtract 80 from, or that from 80. And then I would put my NABU forever in here. But all of these bytes, so let's just, for example, grow like this and see how many bytes that is. That's 41 bytes. So we already saved how many bytes with uh, the memory and then now by doing this, we can also save bytes because I just specify the X coordinate for, and then just start printing that. The other thing too, that there was a bunch of um, text inside of the BIOS for error messages and for things that were unnecessary. And I shortened those up as well because they didn't need to be there. Uh, that took up space. So everything takes up space. And that's, uh, that's something you learn when you're writing a BIOS. It gets very expensive to do all these little things. When you're programming something for the first time and you're just getting it to work, a lot of times you are concentrating on the code and what the result is, and you're not really thinking about optimization. So I, in the boot function, actually created the um, DPP and the DPH for the disk blocks and the disk header. And I put that all inside of here. Now that took up a ton of space because I already had the struct defined. And then I was populating the struct. Um, and I have to actually, this is something else I, I should mention is that every variable needs to be, to have a um, initialized. Every variable needs to have a value assigned to it in the BIOS. And the reason for that is because there's no heap. You can't let the compiler choose where the variable is going to go. So that's super dangerous because it can go someplace where you don't know where the, the compiler is going to tell it where it can go, and it can go into some place where it shouldn't go. You want to be able to own that memory space. And that's something you would never have an issue with if I wrote this whole thing in assembler. But instead, I took it upon myself to try to see if I can do it in C. Well, as you've seen, there's a lot of actual assembler in here still, but um, 
<laughs> that's just uh, because I couldn't do a lot of it all on C. But anyway, so when I took defined the uh, structs for the uh, DPH and the, and, and the uh, DPB, um, rather than doing them inside of your my boot and assigning them, which use twice as much memory, I do it on when when the when the actual structure is. Uh, is defined, I initialize it right there as well. So I know it doesn't sound like much, but these are like small optimizations. They're little tiny things that you don't think about when you're first writing the program, and then you go through it, and you start shrinking stuff down. So I was able to shrink the BIOS down significantly. I saved a few hundred bytes, actually, in the BIOS, but at the same time, I've also made a ton of optimizations for performance. So in selecting disk alone, there was a ton of optimization done in there. Um, so when it selects a disk between remote and, and, uh, and local. Well, let's jump back into our Nabu adapter store folder. And there's our Goonies file that we copied over. All 32K of it. So it worked. So RNCMD. Um, you guys should check it out. You should use it. It's a great tool for copying files to and from the Nabu Cloud CPM and your PC. Okay, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.